150 points, at least in the early going. How the market closes this afternoon? No clue. Nobody knows that. But we do know that it will open about 200, 250 points on the downside. Mm -hmm. Now, why is that? This is the morning after the Federal Reserve left interest rates unchanged. There is a strong feeling that there's something going on in the economy which the Federal Reserve is not telling us about, but which stops them from raising rates. There's also the suspicion that maybe we've got a politicized Fed and that the Federal Reserve is doing the bidding of President Obama, covering up the failed economic policies. We've got numbers later on the show that show how middle America has lost an incredible amount of ground in the last five or six years. All right, you hear the bell, you see the applause. The market is opening as of right now. I'll guarantee we're sharply lower. Look at it go down. Let's have Please. A look. Right, down there 21. Go. You're going to see this thing snowball on the downside. Whilst you're watching that, let me tell you who's on the program in this block. Ashley Webster, of course, Todd Horowitz in Chicago, D.R. Barton right here in New York. Mm -hmm. Again, no Federal Reserve navel gazing for anybody <laughs> on this program or you'll get the buzzer. I say the, the Fed's playing politics. I say Janet Yellen leaves left. She's funding the president's failed policies with cheap money. Todd, to you first. Have I got a point or what? Good morning, Stuart. You have an absolute point, and it was just proving that the Fed has now become the socialist arm of Obama, making sure that his programs work with their gutless activity of not being willing to raise rates into a market. We've, they, we've passed every benchmark that they've had so far, and yet they refuse to raise rates. So what they're doing is they are bailing out the president, they are bailing out the Democratic Party, watching this thing go on. And the biggest problem here is, is that they are day trading the stock market, which is none of their business. They should let free market and capitalism reign instead of turning us into a socialist nation and letting us worry about the mistakes that Obama made. I think we know where you're coming from, Todd. I'm going to call for the all 30 of the Dow stocks one minute into the trading session this Friday morning. And there they red. are. Every single, and there yep, they are. There they are. Every single one of them on the downside, and the Dow is now down 143. Okay, not quite the 200 point expected, but 130. 37 on the downside. Again, no clue as to how this market closes out today. Cross over for a second and look at the price of oil. Oil down, stocks down. That's the story this morning. We're off about 3% in the price of oil. We're at $45, about 2.8%. Back to you, Todd, again, please. Is this because of the Federal Reserve's non-action? I think it has a little bit to do with the Federal Reserve not action, but I also think it has just a lot to do with the recent rally that we had in oil. We've kind of found a level here in the 40, 40 to 43 level. I think that this has some pressure. We're seeing a lot of pressure overall today because going into the meeting, everybody was assuming, especially the bond market and the oil market, that the Fed was going to actually stop and raise rates. And since they didn't, they are now just getting clobbered. And, of course, the bond market is going straight up right now because of it. Okay. Uh, I want more on the Federal Reserve from you, DR. I know we talked about it earlier on the program, but viewers just joining us. Europe, is your opinion that we are down so sharply because the Federal Reserve did not raise rates yesterday? I think that's part of the picture, and a big part of it, Stuart. But another part is that I think what uh, what Chair Yellen did was confirm the suspicions that the global economy exactly is right. not so good. So yeah. we ran up at a relief rally that uh, right after the announcement, ran up really to 2020 in the S and P's, and then dropped them for the rest of the day. While people go, "Wow, all the statements that were made, everything that was talked about in the press conference came out. Things are not as good as." The they seem. Ash, you read the statement yesterday, yeah. along with the rest of us yeah. who were on the air at that time. She did mention weakness she did. She overseas. Was, yeah, and she was also asked that question in the press conference, and she said, absolutely, we're very aware of what's going on in China and the impact it's going to have on the global economy. There is absolutely no doubt. It's ironic, though, that uh, they also talked about the volatility in the U.S. markets which has been caused by a distortion created by the Fed, by themselves. Yes. They're in such a corner, such a oh, corner. Oh, yes. I mean, they have flooded the market, flooded the economy with a ton of money. They've kept interest rates at zero for a period of years. Mm -hmm. And what are they going to do now? They've become a stock market regulator. If they raise rates, they're terrified that the market will crash. So they don't raise rates, and the market goes down 193 points. <laughs> I mean, exactly that right. is a corner, yep. and I don't know how they're going they to get out. They painted themselves into it. Yeah. I, I want to be a Fed watcher. 
I think that's <laughs> guaranteed employment for life. Because now we're going to be looking at the October meeting. Yep. And then it's the December meeting. Yes. And then maybe, what is it, the January or the February yeah. meeting? Every single time they meet, the Fed watchers will be fully employed. Guaranteed. <laughs> You want to come into this, uh, Todd? I'm ranting. <laughs> I do. I, I do. I do. I do. I, look, the bottom line is the Fed is not going to raise rates this year. I don't care what they say. They can talk. They can talk out of both sides of their mouth, but they are destroying the middle class, and that seems to be their next goal because the middle class has not benefited from this entire movement the entire way up, other than maybe in their 401ks. But the actual earnings and spending power of the middle class has declined, yes. hence the weak retail sales. Let so me give you the, the numbers. problems are they're I've got, creating. I've got the numbers. Here it is. In 2007, middle America, median income, 57,300. Right. 2014, all the way down, 53,600. That's middle America getting kicked in the wallet. You're right, Todd. That's exactly what's happening. Okay, now we are now down 200 points. Put that up on the board, please. Down 206, 207, back to 16.4. Take a look at some of the big names that we follow very, very frequently. First of all, Apple. Where is that stock? Down, but not much. No. 91 cents at 113. Got it. Mm -hmm. Netflix. I'm pretty sure that's down. 2.5%, uh, 101 on Netflix. Remember, the overall market is down, so you can expect some losses. Walmart is down 0.7%. That's not a big loss. 63 bucks per share, 63.99. Caterpillar, down a buck 18. That's a 1.5%. How about McDonald's? All the way down to, well, not all the way down. No. 96 bucks a share. No. Down a buck 30. I, you can't say that's all the way down. No. The are any bargains there at those prices? I don't think I see any real bargains here. I think I like Apple when it drops down a bit more, Stuart. It was down strong yesterday because when you've got so many people flooding into the big names that you and I talk about all the time, Netflix, yeah. Apple, when there's some pullback, then that's where people have their money and they want to protect those but profits. My how so they're going to jump change. out. Indeed. I mean, how many people have been on this program in the last couple of months saying, you know, if you like Apple in the long run, just buy this thing. Mm. Right. Now I'm beginning to hear, oh, wait till it comes down a bit further. And that's a buying opportunity. Opportunity. That's what you're saying. That's what I'm saying, and that's what we've been talking about, that 104 number that, that I've liked for months, Stuart, to get Home there. Depot. I know you like it. I First do. of all, do you own it? I do not. You do not. But you like it, so you're going to buy it. I, I like it, and it's, it's a strong <laughs> stock right here. And I would love to buy some. Again, right now in where the markets are, every time we get the pullback, I'm buying those, those dips in the stronger stocks. Home Depot's held up well. Its cash flow has gone up m amazingly each year for each of the past five years very strongly. Mm. It's gotten some really good traction in the, in, the, in, in the construction market, in the professional construction market, not just home retail. Retail. We keep interest rates low, better for home sales, Decent better, for, uh, yep. better okay. for equities, uh, uh, taking a home equity loan out and doing some repair. Give me a fast take on IBM because I think you hate it. Yeah, I do not like this <laughs> and blue? haven't liked it in a while. Big wow. blue what? for, you know, a centuries old com company that has reinvented itself. That's what they're in real need of. You Stuart. wouldn't buy it at 145. I do not like it here. It just bumped up against that 150 resistance level. I think it has a bunch more downside. Its revenue have been down. Its cash flow has been dropping over the past four years. Wow. Nothing to like here. I'm laughing because about 30 years ago, I was sitting uh -huh. on the set of a different network, and we were talking about Eastman Kodak. Uh -huh. yeah. And I said to my guest, would you short, that means, would you expect yeah. Eastman Kodak to go down some more? Would you mm. short it? And he said, who the hell are you? Some kind of communist? <laughs> the idea of shorting Eastman Kodak 30 years ago. It's the same today. You say short IBM, sell it, don't touch it with a 10 foot pole. That's very un American. With it's it. very un American. That's right. I, I, my first job was with Eastman Kodak, and I did a case oh. study just two years ago about Eastman Kodak's decline. Ouch. Meanwhile, yeah. the Dow Industrials are now down, <laughs> as predicted, 237 points at the latest count. Come on in, Nicole, on the floor of the exchange. The biggest loser. Losers on the Dow. What are they, please? Okay, so we had all 30 Dow names to the downside. You have Boeing, Goldman Sachs, and J.P. Morgan are the biggest losers right now. Procter & Gamble, by the way, just turned green for a moment. So I guess my next point. But Boeing is worth 17 negative Dow points. Goldman Sachs, 26 negative Dow points. J.P. Morgan, 10 negative Dow points. And in fact, technology and financials are the worst of the 10 sectors when we look at all of them. So all 10 sectors are lower. But I can tell you, some of the traders, when you see the sell-off, they don't seem particularly worried 
as you noted, could have been so much worse, right? When you just noted some of the losers. When I looked at technology, I saw eBay down two and a half percent. When I looked at financials, I saw Schwab and JP Morgan down two, three percent. So that's not huge selling. Maybe they might even buy them back a little bit. So that's how the traders are trying to navigate right now. All right, Nicole, thank you very much indeed. I'm going to move on to the S&P 500, 500 stocks in the S&P. Who are the biggest losers there? I got Freeport, Mac Moran, I got Transocean, Diamond Offshore, all of them energy related stocks. And of course, they're going down because the price of oil is down about 3%, $45 yeah. a barrel. eBay is down big and Slumberger, another energy stock. Got it. Now to the NASDAQ. Uh, big losers there. Some of these companies, you probably don't know them. Vertex Green, Vertex, Green Mountain, Win, Sandus, Baidu. I think we know all of those. Yeah. Um, I'm going to chuck this at you, DR. Any of them on that list? Keep the list up there, please. DR, tell me, look at that list. Any bargains that you'd buy? That is the biggest stay away from this list list I've ever seen, <laughs> Stuart. I, a win is a disaster, will continue to yeah. be a disaster with what's China. going on in Macau. Yeah. Um, and that list is the, that, that's the poster child list for let's not do any of that. I've got an interesting, uh, it just fed to me by the New York Times, nothing to do with finance at all, yeah. and I don't think this is affecting the market. The New York Times says, U.S. plans direct talks with Russia on Syria. It had been mooted that President Obama would at least talk to Putin, maybe meet him. And the Times says U.S. Hold on a second, let me get it back. Times says it plans, plans direct talks with Russia I on Syria. I think Russia had put out a note recently in the last couple of days that they would be open to talking, which is interesting. So we're going to talk to them about all those troops that they're flying yeah, the into Syria. The military build-up yes. in yeah. Syria. Well, we'll talk. Then we'll send them a strong letter. Okay. <laughs> All right, like check the, the price of oil, please. I don't mean to be facetious or sarcastic. That is a low form of wit. $45 a barrel on the price of crude oil is down $1.52, 3% down. And remember, oil often leads stocks. Wow. In this goes down. Price of gold. Look at that, 22 11, bucks. Yeah, 22 bucks. Now, there's a, draw, uh, there's a, ra a yeah. rally. Um, Todd, come on back in again. Is, is the rally in gold, if I can call it that, $21 yeah. higher, is that again because of the Federal Reserve? Uh, I think actually gold really had found a bottom and is railing. It's getting a little bit of help from the Federal Reserve. It's getting a little bit of help from the weaker dollar. But I think at this point, gold had found a real nice level that you'd want to buy. It had gotten pretty depressed and it built a nice little base. So I think gold itself looks like it's got a nice chance to run up here to at least 1170, if not a little bit higher. But overall, I think you want to be buying gold and buying energy here. I think these are the right well, areas a, yeah. to start gold, accumulating here. Gold's an inflation play, yes. which is interesting. That's the, 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 the easy answer, but we don't really have inflation no, right we don't. now. That's, well, that's interesting. We don't. We don't. Also a crisis play, though, when people are feeling uneasy about what's safe going haven. on. No, it's no, a, no, it's no, kind no, of a safe no, no, haven. No, wait, 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 wait. I hear, I hear Todd in no, my ear. No, no, Go no. ahead. No. Gold is, a, is not a fair play. It might have been looked at as a fair play. Gold is another commodity that we use to trade. It's not built on fear. We've seen plenty of fear. Gold never moved. Gold is another commodity that is used in, in certain places for a possible currency, but it's nobody runs that in fear anymore. That's, a, that's an old st a story that is not part of the, the culture that we have now. Gold is another commodity that trades. It's not a fear trade. Okay, we got it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you see me look off to the side occasionally, I'm not ignoring you, the viewer, sitting there at home. No, I'm looking at what's going on on the market because I've got screens all over the place in the studio. Mm -hmm. Now I can look directly into the camera and see that the Dow is down 215 <laughs> points. Got it. It's Friday morning. Look